with everything going on out there today. And uh, I'm not just talking about COVID, COVID-19. I think we've all covered COVID-19 over the last couple of years quite extensively. And I think we're all quite sick of talking about COVID-19. And I think it's quite safe to say that uh, right now we it might be starting to wind down, at, you know, at least at its pandemic status and, uh, you know, where it's just going to maybe become a fact of life, similar to any kind of flu, where once a year you've got to go to the hospital or a doctor and get a flu shot. You might have to go once a year to get a, pand oh, a pandemic shot, a COVID-19 shot. But yeah, um, but as Jose quite elegantly put it last Wednesday night, we are in the final days of the final days. And that means that we are moving closer to the return of Jesus Christ. And as we do that, man, and when I say man, I refer to mankind. That means the women too, the children, everybody that falls under the bracket of mankind. They just seem to be getting increasingly restless. Uh, and I don't mean in their behavior, I mean in their minds and behavior. Uh, anything that is ungodly or not of God, they seem to they seem to want to pursue it. They seem to want to fixate on it very heavily and they just seem to to be open to anything as long as it's not in the bible as long as it's as god is not highly fond of it they're attracted to it they want to do it they want to pursue it more and more and in these final days uh, unfortunately we increasingly become the minority that the you know that the people in the world they they want to target they want to ambush and they really want to pick on us today um you know the things of the bible the things that we do they just seem to really want to pull and i mean they will try to just try to pull it to shreds and anything that doesn't agree with their agenda they refer to them as haters and that's what they refer to us at the moment as as haters. You know, it's it can be easy to get sidetracked um, right now and feel that sense of helplessness that we are outnumbered, that we are the minority now, that everyone looks at us as the enemy and uh, they look at us as the haters. But as but as the world continues to go to and fro searching and trying to understand what life means you know what this life is all for we as the sons and the daughters of the living god we have to remember that we already have that answer mankind have no answer they don't understand properly which is why they do what they do say what they say forgive them father for they know not what they do, is what our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ said as he was bleeding pinned on that cross. We can't get caught up in all that craziness that's going on in the, in the world today. Let's, uh, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 14, please. If you're following along. Um, we're going to pick it up in verse 25. I love this passage. Whenever I, I'm feeling down or feeling that sense of helplessness, I always remember this passage. It's a familiar one. I think Anthony likes this one as well. He speaks of it fondly when he gives a talk. And verse 25, and in the fourth watch or in the early hours of the morning, uh, of the, uh, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went onto them, that, that's the disciples, walking on the sea. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me or demand that I come unto thee on the water. And he said, this is Jesus, said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous or strong or very, uh, very vigorous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt, or why have you got so little faith? Why have you doubted me again? Why do you have such doubt in me? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Jesus called to Peter in this situation, saying, you know, come. He was, of course, testing Peter's faith here in this situation. And Peter, being full of belief, he steps out onto the water and walks on it. Now, this is true for us as well. Uh, Jesus in the scripture tells us, come to me, all ye that are heavenly laden or heavenly burdened, and I will give thee rest. Ask or anything you ask in my name, that will I do. And we take faith in this. And we initially come to the Lord in faith, in trust. But then, you know, we suddenly get distracted by the events that may be going on uh, around us or around the world, and we begin to develop that fear, which leads to that hesitation, and then our faith takes a hit uh, and starts to dip, and we begin to sink. We become submerged in the failings of this world, but not only the failings of this world, but maybe the trials or tribulations or some kind of dilemma that may be close to home that may be happening in our own life. We become distracted by these things. But as Peter began to sink in this situation, in his fear, did Jesus just watch and cheer and laugh as Peter sank further and further into the water, thinking that it was fun and games, that he could torture Peter this way? No, he, he reached out his hand and he pulled him up. The minute Peter said, help me, Jesus' hand was there as a safety net to pull him up. We just need to know that Jesus is going to catch us and lift us up. We need to let go of our fears and those doubts. And know that Jesus is bigger than anything that may be going on in our own lives. No matter how big. Or some of the things that may be going on around us that aren't affecting us personally. Things that may be completely out of our control. Out of our, as Anthony put it the other day, out of our pay grade. But Jesus is going to win the day. And not just when he comes back to win the war and make his enemies his footstool. But he's going to win the everyday battles in our in our life. It may not feel like that at times. We may feel that God has abandoned us. But whenever we feel to st- uh, whenever we start to feel that way, like the Lord has turned His back on us, abandoned us, just stop and remember what happened to Peter. What happened to Peter here in this situation? That. Peter became distracted with what was happening around him and his 
trust, his faith began to take a hit. But the Lord was there to bring him through by lifting him up, replanting him on solid ground so that he could continue on his path towards the Lord, towards the end game, which is salvation. The Lord doesn't abandon his people ever. We've got to get out of that frame of thinking. We just, we just need to, to learn to focus on reaping those blessings. Focus on the blessing from the Lord. Taking him up on his offer. That he will heal us. He'll take care of us. He'll provide for us. He'll give us that job that we so desperately need to um, supply for our family by giving a, or give us a, that job promotion that leads to more money, that leads to, to doing the things that we need to do, you know? So not only can it uh, increase our faith, but it can be a testimony for our Father's sake. When others, when others who may be going through a similar situation to us, we can stand out as a beacon for them, that beacon of hope that we are called to be, which will lead to them speaking to us, asking us why we've got uh, such composure or such a balance in these situations, why we've got such ease when things seem to be failing or crumbling down around us. You know, and we can say with, we can say easily with that, a surety it's not because i have faith in myself it's because i have it's not because of some guru you know or some self-help tape you know plug this in one hour a day and you'll be good as gold the peace comes from a higher power it comes from knowing that this higher power which is god cares for me and he promised to me that if i come to him in faith that he would take care of all of my needs. And it is in that that I have such a peace, such a calm, because God has all things in his hand. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to worry about these things every day. I only have to call on him and put them in his hand, his more than capable hand. Uh, our sister Cassandra gave a testimony several weeks ago of this very thing. As a lifeguard who was able to jump in the pool and rescue a, uh, a young girl who was in distress. And the boss saw it, saw this testimony, and said to her, this is uncommon. People of your experience, they freeze at these moments. They, they can't do what you just did. You know, it was amazing to him. He may not have asked her at that, that point in time, how did you do this, Cassandra? But years down the track, it may come back to his mind one day and he, he'd be like wow and then he might go back to Cassandra and say I remember that day what happened on that day what, how could you do this what gave you such composure to rescue that young girl and she can tell him the peace of the Lord it came through the Lord it didn't come through me it came through the Lord uh, let's go to Philippians 4 Philippians 4, please. Uh, I've got to find it there. There it is. Uh, Philippians 4 and verse 13, please. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We've heard this scripture so many times. Spoken from the platform. It's been included in countless talks and testimonies. However, you know, we, we need to keep reminding ourselves every day until it becomes branded in our minds, until it becomes permanently ingrained in our thoughts. So when the day is tough and everyone else is running to and fro and panicking or freezing or, or running away from their duty, you know, we have that calm. We, we have a sound mind. 
to know that the Lord will take care of any trial or tribulation. So not only can our faith increase, but also our testimony can be well seen by others. So they can see the glory of the Lord. They can see his value to know that what they're doing is not the answer. And what they're going through will have an end. And they perhaps make that decision to pursue a relationship with this higher power, with their father, with their creator. That's our whole duty as being Christians, as being spirit-filled people. That's what we're called to do. That's our job, to come to the Lord and to trust and believe and to get that victory over our money problems our relationship problem, whatever it is, big or small, so that it can be that testimony, so it can lead to telling others about what we have, what it is that we have, that there is a higher power that loves you and wants to see the best for you. You don't have to struggle. You struggle because you choose to, or you have not because you ask not. If we hide our, our testimony, you know, if we're worried about what the people are going to think, or more importantly, what they could do to us, then unfortunately, we become useless to God. He cannot use us to further his word, to save others from their fears, from their doubts, and to save them from eternal damnation. He can't use us as that vessel if we, we hide away, hide our testimony. We become completely useless to God. Let's flip to 2 Timothy, please. Two Timothy chapter 1, and we'll go down to verse 7. Uh, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind or a solid mind. When we get dragged down by fear, we're not walking in the spirit. You know, don't get me wrong. <laughs> we're human, right? We all have that emotion of fear. We all experience it at one stage in our life or the other. That's, that's not what I'm, uh, what I'm saying here. If we allow fear to conquer us, to drag us down, it's because we're not walking in the spirit, where, where we're not allowing the spirit to destroy that fear, to allow us to be that bold person, to claim the victory over that situation or condition that we're going through. And that's when things go wrong in our life. Daniel in the Old Testament prayed three times a day, went to his knees and prayed at his bedside three times a day. He kept connected to the Lord, to our Father. And because of that, when the time came, when the king threw him into the den of lions, Daniel did not have fear. He trusted in God, in his father, that he would not abandon him at his greatest hour of need. Or at any time for that matter, not just at a great, a great time of need, but in any situation in his life. But Daniel was right, wasn't he? The mouths of those hungry lions were closed. Not one bone, not one hair on Daniel's head was hurt during that time. After that, after Daniel was taken out of the den, the king put those people who reported Daniel to the king into that den. And they were quickly consumed by the lions, by those hungry lions. They were devoured. Their bones were were ripped to shreds, uh, I think it describes in that scripture. That's a very clear miracle, a very 
clear situation that was out of Daniel's control, that was vanquished by God, who has all things under control. And as we saw with Peter, just a small amount of fear and unbelief, he began to fail. We need to do away with that kind of negativity. The negativity that God can't do this or God won't do that. Which can only be accomplished through Jesus and his word. Being connected to our Lord and Savior. Taking the Lord up on his word. Asking him, putting the, the troubles, our problems that we face to him in prayer. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. That'll be my closing scripture. 1 Corinthians, please. Ch uh, chapter 16. And verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men, be strong. Stand firm. We stand firm by continuing to overcome situations through Christ Jesus. If we don't put anything to the Lord in prayer with a confidence that he will come through for us, our faith simply does not grow. It fails. And we allow those doubts and fears to creep in. Every time a situation arises, those doubts and fears will overtake us every single time. We need to be courageous to be like Peter and to, to step out of that boat. To have the faith in our Lord and Savior, in our Father, not to get swept up by the crazy, the craziness of the current events. You know, all those future ones that are on the horizon, the ones that we know are coming. When it comes to the Lord, we just need to know that he will do what he says he will do. And what he said he would do would, was protect us, provide, provide for us. Um, I think some of you know that I'm now a volleyball referee. Being a referee terrifies me. It's terrifying just for me. I'm a, um, an introvert, just in case you didn't know. I'm a naturally shy person. I hate speaking in public. I find nothing more terrifying than being in public in this manner or in this way. So standing up on a podium above the net is terrifying. You know, when everyone's looking at you, scrutinizing every decision, everything that you do, I mean, it's uncomfortable for me. I was actually very close to quitting refereeing. I actually wrote Pastor Mike a very lengthy email that I'm done. I just, I, I don't want to be in that uncomfortable situation. I've got enough going on in my life. I, I don't need 16-year-old girls on my case every night. But Pastor Mark reminded me of one fact. He wrote a... a an email back to me and it just had one statement in it we can do all things through christ who gives me strength the scripture i just read even the small and insignificant things such as being a referee you know it doesn't lead to salvation it has no significance to my salvation but the lord still has my back you know, but hearing that phrase, I knew I had no excuse. I'm a spirit-filled person. I'm a child of God. There is nothing that the Lord will abandon me on. And I, I stayed being a referee, and I've, and I've had to step up to the podium, remembering that I am a child of God. But that phrase is a simple phrase, right? I mean, how many times have we heard it spoken by a brother or a sister? It's pretty frequent. But we really have to stop and think about what that phrase actually means. And then think about Peter in his situation. 
that I just read. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. Peter, when he put his trust in the Lord, he walked on water. Not through him, but through Jesus, through God. And only through Peter's trust and belief allowed him to conquer the water only. When we get distracted and stop trusting in the Lord, we begin to fail and we lose that strength. Daniel in the lion's den, his faith and trust in God gave him the strength to conquer the lions. When we conquer, we can conquer anything through, through the strength of the Lord, but only when we invite him into our life. Allow him to direct and more importantly, dictate in our life. Do we have that strength to conquer all? To conquer the flesh, to conquer the world, whatever tribulation that we have. And all the people said, I'll leave it there.